Evening. Evening. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the network, the hotel networks are ha- having fun tonight. <laughs> it keeps dropping out every about 15 minutes. I'm not sure how long I'll stay on the call, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> right, well, we'll, the stream's on now. Um, and I've got a new monitor, which is my old TV. So, you know, it's the camera. You won't be able to see because you know, it's probably not the camera on, but the camera looks very high. It's because it is. <laughs> 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 it's up there. So, um, right, let me just... I've got all my notes. We've got an email as well. I'll just send the link out. Ah. Oh, I can see your okay, message now. Yeah. Send that out. I can see things scrolling up on there. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, there we go. Link sent out. Uh, I'm, getting some, I'm getting some feedback. Is that me? Oh, it's gone now. Yeah. That's, oh. It's probably uh, Ian's heating system. It I probably suspect. is, yeah. <laughs> of course, yeah. I'm, still, I'm not picked. I'm going to try and... Net, I'll have a look on eBay after to see if I can get like an audio filter and put it on the mixer. I think that's, yeah. where, that's where it's coming from. Have you got a, um, a digital... Service that, or is it an old analog one? It's all the analog stuff. Uh, we, we replaced ours, it made a big difference because our broadband used to drop <laughs> every time the heating right. went, went off oh. and came on, it just dropped. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wondered. Yeah, it's you can hear it uh, buzzing anyway. Uh, right, let's just get my email up here. I've now got a 40 inch monitor okay. oh. <laughs> 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 my desktop with so, connect, yeah, without <laughs> connect. <laughs> uh, but I've got my new TV. Anyway, we can t- talk about that uh, as we go on. So first of all, welcome back to the show, Gary Whitaker and Jason Coombs. Happy New Year, Ian. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Happy New Year. Is it that long? I think it's, it's been it about is, a month. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yes, with, um, with CES and, and, and stuff, it does seem uh, quite a long while since we last, we last talked. Um, and it was <laughs> so we've had two CES shows and then I was at the show so yeah we're uh, busy so I had a busy old time so I've got my new TV which I'm, I think I mentioned I was getting um, which I can talk about I've not done the review yet but a new Samsung uh, LED 55 inch it was very nice uh, so if I move my Sony onto my desk if you remember before Christmas my TV broke in my which is my monitor uh, so, so the TV from downstairs is now upstairs. So I'm now looking at a 40 inch monitor. So anybody watching on the live video or watching the video on YouTube will see the camera looks quite high. It's because the camera's on top of the TV and it's mm-hmm. up there. So I'm up there now. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we've done CES. We're back. So yeah, there's been seems to be plenty of news since then. Lots of XBMC stuff, Surface stuff, Raspberry Pi stuff. Uh, DVB Link have been busy. Uh, we can talk a bit about some of the stuff posted from CES. Um, but first, I have to bring you. I have to show you a tale of a tale, a, t- a tale of surface, good and bad. I think we had this last time, didn't we? <laughs> uh, a surface. So I use the surface loads at uh, CES, and it's been great. So I was going to tell you how great that worked out, but I don't know if you can see the camera. Uh, but that's my surface now. And for anybody who can't see that, it's a black screen with surface written on it in the middle. And that's it. That's all it does. I know. Oh, uh, that's quite a good mirror. <laughs> it is a very good mirror uh, with the word surface in the middle. Um, so, but that's it, yeah. So there we go. One, one dead surface in my hand. Um, now, I've tried all the recovery options. Um, you know, you recovery USB stick. I've tried uh, holding down the power button and the volume and everything else and nothing gets past it so uh it's going back to microsoft um i think uh, they, they do an advanced they do two return programs on the for, for the surface they do one where you send it back and they'll send you another and another where they send you a replacement before you send the other one back but if you don't send the other one back they charge you for it 
um, and because you've got your credit card details already from when you previously ordered one. So, so I've done the 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 one where they send it anyway. So I'm hoping to get one in a, in, in a few days to get a replacement surface and uh, I can restore. I mean, it's not it's not too bad. It's not too big of a deal with with something like Windows RT and Surface because you can you can just reinstall your apps. All my notebooks are in. Evernote, um, all my files are in SkyDrive or Dropbox, and I've got an SD card with all the media on, so it's going to be fairly easy to, to do, but uh, frustrating really that you've got a, effectively a, a, a three-month-old, four-month machine that's completely dead and no way of getting into it. And that's, um, I mean, it's, it's good that they do a swap out in that way, because that's, that's the thing with gadgets, isn't it? You kind of, especially devices, you kind of become reliant on them, and then when you haven't got them, it's like when you when your phone breaks, mm. you know, the, or you have to send it back in and then wait for the replacement to arrive. So that's that's pretty good. But yes, yeah, that's that's you know disappointing to see that it's because what I mean, you've had it three months, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I really was going to sing the praises of the device. I took it with me to CES and. Um, an example of how how well it works in, in during the press conferences on the Monday, uh, I was taking because I, I do all the blog posts in Word now I'll, on the Surface, so I was taking pictures f- on the Surface camera itself, copying and pasting it, you know, it straight into the Word document and writing the blog post while I was sat in the press event because the Wi-Fi was really good at Mandalay Bay, so um, so the Netgear press conference, I actually finished the, the the blog post about the press conference in the press conference and just sat around for another 10 minutes as it, as it finished. Um, now, yes, you could do that with an iPad, I suppose. It's, but it's, I always find it fiddly with uh, some of the blog editing stuff. Maybe I could have done that with my MacBook Air, but I'd start to get paranoid about battery life. And I know with the Surface, I can really literally run it all day. And... Um, and not worry about the battery. Uh, now, I did carry the charger with me on the first day, but then for the rest of the week, I didn't even bother to take the charger with me because I was so confident that I'd get all the char- you know, I'd have a full charge, and I, and I did. And, w- and when I went to the Samsung press conference, which was standing room only, it was absolutely packed. Um, I was stood up the side, sort of leaning against the uh, leaning against the wall, and uh, so sort I of just took the keyboard off, and because I couldn't rest it anywhere, so as you wouldn't be able to do with a laptop, so I took the keyboard off and used the on-screen keyboard, and still did the same thing and, and got the blog post out as well. So, so really, I did get um, good use of it, like for that, for that, and I got the blog post written up, and I never had to worry about plugging it in. It was really good for that. Uh, of course, I come unstuck when I wanted to do video, and I had to use my uh, Mac then, um, and that drains the battery life. So I sort of, sort of end up carrying the Mac around on the charger for the Mac. So. It's close to being sort of the ideal device, apart from when it's dead. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is that. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, but I suppose that, that can happen to any device, really. Although I had seemed to hear a few people have similar issues, but uh, you know, that that can happen to any sort of consumer electronic device. But but overall, at CES, it worked out great. In fact, when I was at Philadelphia Airport, they had free Wi-Fi. And I had a couple of hours to kill, and I was just watching films on Netflix, and you know, not worrying about your battery life, not worrying about having to plug it anywhere, uh, put it in on my lap. You know, it worked out really. I didn't even take the touch cover; I just used the type cover as well. So anyway, it, the experience from CES was it was great, and it worked out really well. Good. Yeah, I'm. Um, I've still a you know, kind of love hate relationship with my service. And <clears throat> on the one hand, you know, it's like nine hours battery life, and and the way I use it at the moment, um, I'm probably only charging it maybe every second or third day. And um, so from that perspective, it's working out really great. But I'm still still frustrated with the the speed of the mail app and the the music app. You know, when I want to find some of my own content. Um, if I want to go into an artist, I can find the artist, but I can't drill down into a particular album. It, it all becomes a bit, you know, <clears throat> I'm finding I'm doing the thing that I that I loathe to do, which is I'm working the way it wants me to work as opposed to it working the way I want it to. But then but then I'll use an app like Next Gen Reader and you know, I've fallen in love with it again because it's, you know, it is, I think Next Gen Reader is a really good example of a, of a great Metro app. You know, it's, yeah. it's really fast to use and, you know, it just shows what it can do. And I just, I still... At the back of my mind, I'm still worried that the that the the processor in the surface is either underpowered or that RT should have been a big Windows Phone operating system and that save you know Windows 8 for um, Atom and and um, core level processors. But I kind of reached that point now. I I do really like my my surface, but I think if I was choosing to buy it again, I think 
I don't think I would necessarily buy another one yet. I think maybe I probably jumped in a generation too early. Yeah, I mean you quite you are an early adopter, and uh, yeah, that, that that is a pain that you you have to suffer. Um, although I know you know I had no issues with the speed while I was using it when I was away. Um, you know it was great for that. I was swiping between. Uh, the, you know, a browser, and then going back to um, going back to Word, and you know, going then going to the pictures and swiping back again, and yeah, like you said, the, the email client is rough around the edges. All the apps, really, the built-in apps, still need work. Um, Next Gen Reader is good. There's, the Twitter client is there's there's a lot of quite good Twitter clients, but there isn't one killer one. Um, yeah, and and. But I, I found I use Gmail all the time, so I, I actually quite often spend a lot of time just using the Gmail browser because it's the same as on the desktop. So I don't mm -hmm. really think use the Windows Mail client that much. I sometimes do. It's good for offline stuff, but um, especially when you were online like I was, all, you know, a good Wi-Fi connection. It it was it was fantastic and um, you know, very productive. So it, from that, it, it worked out well. If it wasn't dead. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. Really, yeah. it, I had a good experience with it, and I, and I haven't been using my my iPad or my MacBook at all. Uh, in, in the evening, I, okay, I don't use it all day. I'm I'm using my regular laptop at work, but um, you know, at night when I'm sat on the sofa and doing some blog posts, I just use the the Surface then. So, and I don't know if you saw, but I did seek out some Surface accessories and found one. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yeah, I heard you. Uh, heard you talking about that. It's um, nice to see they're they're coming slowly but surely. Yeah, it was a nice little USB expander thing that clicked on the side, um, and I offered to buy it from them. I said, "Can can I buy that unit off you right now? I've got dollars. <laughs> Give me the, the thing." <laughs> and uh, they said, "No, it was an engineering sample, and they wouldn't let me take it." <laughs> I hope they send you one. <laughs> well, they, they don't. They're not even. They don't even sell them. If you know, they're a company that then resells them. If you, oh, you know, be, it, yeah, yeah. I'm sure yeah, it's going to be one of those CS things. It never comes to be. <laughs> yeah, I, I also <laughs> tried to find a surface cover as well and failed at that. Although there is a there was a pop up store in the fashion mall uh, selling surfaces, and their cover now was like sixty dollars. I'm not paying that. <laughs> so <laughs> I've yet to find the perfect cover for the surface. Yeah, I think just just finish off what I said. I I am. Really, kind of um, contradictions with the surface because you know I say I probably wouldn't buy another one, but I also I don't think I could give it up. So I realise I am a big contradiction when it comes to the surface. But you know, it's it's just one of those devices. I don't think it was quite ready. I don't know why, but I think uh, I tell you what I did see um, the Samsung ATIF. I think it's the ATIF, isn't it? That's a, yeah. um, a very similar form factor to the surface, and that looked quite nice actually. The way that split apart and, and everything else. So. I, I, yeah, I know what you mean about you know the surface. If I'd got a Windows, say one of the HP Envies or something, a similar form factor with a keyboard that splits off that ran Windows 8, would that have meant I could have left my MacBook at home and edited the videos on it? And I probably could. But then, as this is the conversation I had with Ed Bot, is then your battery life is compromised, so you're carrying the charger, and it, it's I've yet to see the perfect device. And um, I mean, we could talk about that in other Windows. Um, the Surface Pro, which was announced uh, as well, while I was uh, since we last recorded, I think it's February 9th. So let's, let's talk about that, Gary. Have you seen any of the specs for that, or have you seen any of the, the pricing for that? I've certainly seen the pricing and, and the specs. Um, I'm actually quite tempted by the Surface Pro, although it is slightly delayed, isn't it, in terms of actually getting it out? Because wasn't wasn't this week supposed to be the original launch week? I think it was supposed to be. Was it 90 days or something? I think. Yeah. So. So, so look, I was trying to work it out, and I was thinking it must have been round about the the twentieth or something like mm. that. That when it was when it was due for release. But uh, um, I mean, it's, it, it's it's quite an interesting bit of kit. I mean, I think the one hundred twenty eight k great good version's got eighty gig eight eighty. Sorry, my tongue's tongue's tied tonight. Eighty three twenty eight k version is it a Spectrum? One hundred twenty eight gig version. Yeah, Spectrum. Actually, no, you never get a Spectrum that big. Um, <laughs> twenty eight gig version, uh, you get eighty three gig free, but the sixty four gig only has twenty three gig free when you finish finish loading all the the operating system. Yeah. So so that sounds a bit restrictive. Um, but, but I mean, I, I, my I think my issue with the Surface Pro now is having seen the the Asus um, Atom-based device, 
that actually almost tempts me more because it's a lot cheaper. Right. Uh, is that the this new atom, the one that the, the Clover yeah. Trail? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is what I've been thinking about, I've seen people talking about. Yeah, which should, I mean, that's, it's not quite the same spec. I mean, in many ways, the Surface Pro is a, is a, um, a compass better for the, for the Mac, the Mac um, Book Air. Um, and I can certainly see in that, that marketplace, the price is, is, is very reasonable for that. I mean, I, I find it kind of amusing that people are really moaning about the price of the Surface Pro. And yet, so then when the, People are sort of talking about the iPad 128 gigs being more expensive than Surface Pro. And they say, oh, yeah, that's OK. <laughs> it, just, <laughs> it just seems, it seems a bit. <laughs> yeah, well, the 128 iPad is only, I, I think, when it's only a couple hundred quid short of a MacBook Air. Yeah. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just, that. I, yeah, I do find that a bit difficult. I mean, it's, so you get an i5 processor with the Surface Pro, which is OK. I mean, I'm, in some ways, I prefer an i7, but um, 64 gig or 128 gig memory uh, models. Um, basic all the ports you've got on the normal surface, and you get the pen, which is quite interesting. So, I'm yeah, quite, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, I've always been quite a fan of tablets and with pen and input. I quite like doodling away on my pad, and I can see me see could see me using that. That's actually one thing which does tempt me with it. Um, I want to see the reviews basically. Um, see when people when they start coming out and people who actually have a chance to really use them, what the battery life is really like in real, real life and how hot they get and things like that. I think I think yeah, the battery. Cool. Oh, go ahead, Jess. I was just saying that's the thing, isn't it? It's you know it's a Core i5. It's gonna it's it's got the vents. It's gonna have a fan. Hopefully, maybe they can keep the fan to to a minimum and, and kind of normal usage until you start doing things like playing games. You know, kind of x eighty six style games and whatnot. But I just think uh, you know in some ways I think maybe the, the Surface Pro will be a, a V one. I think you know when the next. Um, iteration of the uh, of the core processors comes out i can't remember the, the the code name now but they're going to support connected standby um and you know maybe they might get a bit closer to the to the nine hours battery life whether or not it would yeah. it would be the same as the surface rt with you know two to three days standby i don't, I don't know but but for me as attractive as the surface pro is and and i know that it even if there are some um, performance issues with apps that you probably wouldn't notice on a Core i5. I know I don't notice it on our Core i7. Um, yeah. But I think, it, for me, that's not the device I'm looking for. I wanted the Surface RT because I want an appliance. I want something that, you know, can't have traditional apps put on it that, you know, isn't a, isn't a PC, basically. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, I can see where you're coming from with that. I mean, for me, I need a PC. I mean, I need... Mm. Uh, to me, to have something like that, I could actually lock up tiny bits of code on and show people and demo things. It would be really good. But I'm, but I'm sort of torn between that, that and and the atom. Although the atom would be low power than that, but but in terms of battery life and and, and heat, uh, it might it might be a better bet. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people who um, got things like the Asus S5 and things last like last year, and have found that they get incredibly hot on the lab because they're, they're thin and you haven't got any sort of padding between you and the, <laughs> the processor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, so I think the special thing, protection needed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> just, maybe that's actually one of the things with the surface surface because obviously you've got the keyboard you can wrap around the back to give you some <laughs> protection. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing I want to see is really how thick they are in reality. How because I mean, it's, we've said this before about the, the actual the surface. It, it, it seems thicker and heavier than it actually is. Um, I'm just wondering the same is going to be true of the Surface Pro. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, th I think the Surface Pro looks a nice device, but I, I'm agreeing with, with you, Jason, that, that I don't want my Surface necessary to be a, a traditional PC. I, I like the appliance nature of it and, uh, and the fact that you get the long standby and the battery life and everything else. So so that it's, it's good for the, it's great for that, but uh, it, yeah. it's when it comes to the core task, you know, like editing video, editing audio, editing photos perhaps, then uh, yep. at the moment that could be an issue. I guess though, as the apps get better and future generations of Surface, with 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 even the even the um, the ARM ones have become more powerful. You know, we'll we'll see that kind of apps, and so maybe in the future that that won't be an issue, and and the perfect device will be like the third gen service Surface RT mm. or something like that. The one thing I could see, and it's it's too it's too um, expensive a device to to use 
if it but I could certainly, you know, I certainly would love to swap our Iconia for a Surface Pro to sit in, sit in the kitchen as the, the Iconia does with, you know, Media Center running on it and, you know, recorded TV and live TV. And so, uh, you know, I could certainly see a, a place for it. And, and digress slightly, but it's interesting since my, since my wife's taken over my um, my old uh, Nokia 800. Um, she, she made the comment to me the other day. She goes, you know what, I barely use the PC anymore because I get my emails on my smartphone, um, which is she'd not had a smartphone before. And I've got right. the tablet. You know, the, the PC stuck away in the study is getting used less and less, almost to the point that if we weren't using it to, to run Media Center and record our TV shows, you know, we'd start to question whether or not we actually even need it. And in that way, I think a Surface Pro would be an attractive device because then that would kind of become the family PC, yeah. if you like. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because I've actually been running around with a, a tiny Android tablet, but using um, Splash Top for them too to actually talk back to my media PC at home running windows 8 and i've actually found that a really good experience right i've got wi-fi all the time at work and it actually it's actually like having windows 8 on a tablet it mm. really is um with a full with full experience and, and and the talk recently about cheaper surface um or cheaper rt devices from microsoft potentially um maybe smaller form factor i could really see that working because i mean this is a basically a seven inch device and it only can use windows 8 on it <laughs> Desktop is a bit restrictive, um, but you certainly can use all the window, the store apps. Yeah, mm. I, I've um, but for quite a while since I've started really not taking a, uh, a PC when I go on business trips. I always remote desktop back on use VPN, then remote desktop back back onto my PC if I've got to do any work. So yeah, yeah so it's just a, an extension of that. And as the if you get decent connection, then uh, you know that is that's an option. I have to say, I've been, I've been really impressed with the performance of Splashdot 2, 2. I haven't really played much with Splashdot 2, but um, I've signed up for the, the, the slightly more exp the pro version of it, which gives you remote access. And I, I'm actually able to stream video from my media PC quite happily over, over Splashdot. Um, I was watching some of the Sky Go stuff on it remotely, and it works really well. Oh, um, that's either review. Yeah, yeah, I will do <laughs> Last few few weeks has been uh, incredibly hectic at work, but uh, I'll see what I can do. Yeah, that sounds good. That I'll give that a try. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So we'll be interested to see. The one thing we don't know about the Surface Pro is uh, where and when in the UK and how much. Yep. I wonder if that will come straight into stores like John Lewis and whatnot, or whether or not there'll be another. I <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if John Lewis may not take it because I, I, I was talking to one of the um, managers of one of the John Lewis stores and he was saying that the return rate on the Surface RT is incredible, it's incredibly high. It's the highest they've ever had on any consumer electronic device. And is, is you that, think that's confusion? I think it's confusion, yeah. I think people buy it, think it's a full full Windows PC and find it's not and then return it because, because they say that most of them are in really good condition when they come back. So if, if you want a bargain Surface RT, just go to Lewis John Lewis and say they've got one. <laughs> I, mean, I, I went to the one in uh, Manchester last week, I think it was, and there was uh, you know, a few people around it and to, to a sales guy there, so there seemed a lot of interest in it. Mm. I think the form factor really attracts people, and, mm. and maybe that's where the Surface Pro is going to come in because people will still get the form factor, but actually think it's a good big kit as well. Yeah, and perhaps upsell or upsold mm. is the right word. Yeah. Um, you know. You can see the base model at uh, 400 quid now, but if you want the real thing, you know, you want everything, go for the pro version. And... Yeah, yeah, you can see that. My, my concern would be, again, that um, people, confusion that people will be returning them, expecting, saying, well, you know, I don't understand the battery's not lasting as long as an iPad, it's a tablet, Why, you know, and that's, so that would be my, my worry, I think, that, mm. they've, you know, they've kind of created this, this odd sense of confusion. Yeah. But I think... Um, but so just going back to what you were saying, Gary, I, I, you know, playing around with the iPad mini, I, that seven inch form factor is, isn't something I've ever thought I'd be interested in, but I, I could really see myself using a seven inch tablet. Hmm. See, that's what you need to do. You need to put splash top on your iPad and, and talk to your <laughs> oh, Rich has just said in the chat room that uh, his assistant, an assistant at John Lewis tried to sell him one and said, come back in Feb when we have it in. Does, Rich, does, is that the pro you're talking about there? Um, 
because that would be interesting if, if they're expecting to sell the pro because that would answer the yeah. answer the question then i, I think um I don't think, I can't remember if I got a chance to say this when we recorded back in Christmas, but we were in uh, John Lewis in, in Milton Keynes and the staff there had all got Surface branded shirts on. So, you know, given that some people have said that it was kind of a bit lacklustre with, you know, a Surface just stuck on the end of a table, I thought, thought it was quite good to see a bit of branding and a bit of, you know, kind of in your face, yeah. come and look at this. Yeah, but certainly there was, um, it was set out well. It was with the, you know, it was with the other tablets as well. Uh, so I think it was quite good, uh, quite good job they've done although i have to say if you look at what well, samsung are doing yeah so rich is saying yes i mean he's a pro so maybe john lewis are expecting to sell that um in february so it'll be good if we if that's the case at least we can go and have a look but i was just going to say samsung have got pop-up store in the traffic center in the bottom they're not selling them they're just demonstrating them they had a they've got ends in in the in tesco's they've got them in john lewis they really Doing a lot on promotion, and I think they're they're doing a good job selling the, their their tablets and phones, especially the tablets. It's actually it's been quite interesting for me the last few weeks because the project I'm working on, which I can't really say much about, but uh, I've actually been playing with virtually every manufacturer's Windows 8 tablet device, from from the bases through the the Samsungs and everything like that. Samsungs well built but pricey, but mm. my my favourite is definitely the the the. the the Asus um, Atom-based one. I really, really like that. It's not as not as performant as I suspect the Surface Pro is going to be, but it's definitely more performant than the than the um, RT surfaces. Mm. And you get and you get all the Windows bits. Yeah. As well. So and including video editing software. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, we'll see how we get on. I mean, um, that I've got to hopefully get my Surface back, and uh, hopefully the next we couple of weeks we'll find out the price and we can go and have a have a look at yeah. one in uh, in John Lewis's one not far from yeah. down the road from me. Yeah. Um right some of the things I wanted to talk about I mentioned this last week uh but just if you've got a media center if you want the free upgrade to media center from Windows 8 Pro you've got till Thursday I think to get it and activate it as well. You can't just get the key and keep it like I was going to do. <laughs> it, <in the laughs> it says you need to activate it by uh, next week, so or by th- by the th- uh, Thursday. 31st. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, yeah. I've had about five emails saying you need to activate your key. Yeah, so have I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, uh, one, one tip though, if you've, if you've got access to virtualization software, then you know get your Windows 8 installed, activate media center and then in the future you know 12 months time when you do want to upgrade to to to, to media center you've got your key it's already been used you might have to ring up to activate it but but then i think um like uh, i think it was um a few people have been saying you know at the end of the day it's only what you know ten dollars what seven yeah. quid yeah so actually it, yeah. it's probably yeah. you know it's it's more i'd be more worried about the fact that the windows 8 upgrade is going to go from like 25 pounds up to what is it over 100 pounds isn't it yeah yeah, uh, yeah, it is. It, that's certainly going up. Yeah, I don't. I've got any that, Windows Seven machines left, though, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, what's not time, recording that's not it now? Time, is it? No. If, no. If, if you were to buy the the upgrade now at twenty five pounds, you yeah, that's yours. Right. I see. Yeah. Um, I, I guess that you know, if you're going to upgrade, you would have done it by now anyway. I suppose. Um. Anyway, okay. So that's the other thing I wanted to mention. Um. Okay, we've had. So XB, XBMC 12 Frodo's released today. Um, so this is quite a big... I mean, we've, we've talked about the beta and uh, the various release candidates, but this is quite actually a, quite a big update. Uh, I don't know if you have looked at XBMC. I know we've got a few listeners, and Daniel Vieira is one who's used it as well. Um, Gary, is this something you've looked at? I know, Jason, you definitely haven't. <laughs> I haven't played this version. This version, I've never played the XP. So this actually does look really, really good, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. some of the, the extra features in it look look uh, excellent. I'll give you the uh, sort of sort of the highlights of the of, of version twelve. There, it's got HD audio, which supports DTS MA and Dolby True HD. Um, it's got live TV and PVR support, so you can get tuners hooked in with it. Uh, sixty-four bit support for SX. It supports the Raspberry Pi officially for the first time. Um, there's an Android support, which uh, I've done a couple of posts on. There's been a few Android versions. It's got improved AirPlay, improved controller support, improved UPnP. I think it's got the CEC built into it as well, so you can do HDMI control over CEC. So it's really a, a, a pretty mature platform now. I've got to say, it's uh, you know it's been around for quite some time, and uh, yeah, the, I've I've been running the release candidate. Um, 
on my Raspberry Pi and you know it's working really well actually especially I've got the iPlayer stuff in DVB link in there and it's working really well actually so uh, good 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 development and it's it actually surprisingly works quite well on the on the Nexus 7 as well on that sort of 7 inch form factor which you were talking about um, and oh expect as well I if you you can download it directly from XBMC if you want it but I expect I, I expect the Raspberry MC and um, Raspbian and all those sort of um, Xbian, sorry, they're going to be the sort of do specific builds for that as well. So I'd expect to see uh, expect to see those. Uh, okay, what well, next? Well, I'll talk about uh, right. DVB Link have been busy um, <laughs> as a way. As a, as a, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, let's just see where we're up to since we last talked. We've got. DVB Link IPTV 4.52, which went through various betas, but now is uh, released for the NAS, and uh, the TV server is released for uh, the NAS, but I think that's beta. So, Gary, what's the difference between, them between DVB Link for IPTV, DVB Link TV server, what's the free scale Synology? <laughs> what's all these different <laughs> versions then? It's basically just what, what they run on. I mean, free scale Synology is obviously to run on a Synology box um, in with the free scale option. Um, uh, the IP, IP TV is obviously to, to where you've got IP TV screens, streams you want to bring in, or, or like I did some years back, actually put a video camera into the billing using it. Um, and obviously the TV server is the main one which actually interfaces to the various TV tuners, mm. uh, be, be the DVB-T or um, analog or um, a couple of American standards. Right. So, so as ever, they keep upgrading it. Um, the Synology one, has, I've, I've spoken to a couple of people using that, and they, they're delighted with it. So it does sound like that's that's a, a, a good thing. I think more and more DVB uh, are going to be logic are going to be moving away from media center more, more and more towards the uh, the NAS boxes and the various things. I think that I don't think you'll be able to find a NAS box soon, which they don't run on. Um, and hopefully, they'll get some deals with some of the manufacturers to get them out there. Yeah. Um, Ready, ready installed, and that way avoid some of the issues people have installing and stuff. But uh, obviously, yeah. you need to find your guide data in these cases. So the, the fact that they've got some deals with some of the guide data people makes them that tenable as well. Yeah, and they've got the new sort of new installer haven't they, as well to make it a bit easier yeah. on, on those devices. Yeah, yeah, which is very good actually because it, it allows you to sort of like effectively store chunks of um, DVB logic stuff as as apps almost, so mm. you can make pick and choose basically when you're when you're on there. So yeah. Yeah, um, and it seems to be working quite well. I, I haven't played myself with the, any of the, the Linux-based versions of it, but uh, it'd be nice to have a go. Go, and uh, I think the Surface will make a very good client to, to it as well. Yeah, I think the, the, hopefully the the, uh, the Windows app, uh, the Metro app for uh, DVD Link gets a bit uh, a few more updates because it only supports the, the live stream and doesn't support the guide and sort of the PBR stuff. So hopefully that'll uh, get improved over time because that works quite well. I think. Uh, I'm going to move my DVB link onto my Freeview HD tuner because really I've stopped using my main media center uh, for recording TV because of the Sky, because I'm using Sky. So what I thought I'd do with that is put move DVB link from the other machine onto that one and have that one as a TV server. So that work, you know, then feeds the iPad and uh, yeah. and it's Freeview HD as well. So, so that's my next uh, challenge to to set up. Uh, okay, some some other updates. Um, a bit of Apple stuff. iOS six point one released. Fairly minor stuff in there. Um, LTE and bug fixes and whatever. More interesting is you've got an Apple TV is that you've got Bluetooth keyboard support at last, so you can pair up a Bluetooth keyboard, and so you don't have to use that horrible remote when you're trying to enter usernames and passwords and things like that, which I always find really frustrating. Although you can use the iPad as well, but. Uh, yeah, that's been used. In fact, I've got a bit more use out of my Apple TV because the kids have started to watch Netflix on it now. So uh, it was getting a bit dust, but uh, it's got a bit more use of it recently. Uh, now, there's been a couple of uh, Windows Phone stuff going on since uh, I was away. I've got to say, actually, I took my, before we go on to that, I took my Nexus 4 and my uh, 8X with me to CES. So the Nexus 4. Brilliant! I really loved that. I mean, it worked really well. But what I did find is taking lots of p photos uh, on a day where I would be out and about all day, sort of 8 a.m. till midnight or whatever. The um, 
the, it, it took a lot of battery life. So what I was doing, I ended up using the 8X for the taking photos in my um, a Nexus 4 for his phone and the smartphone and calendar and everything else. And that worked, worked really well, actually. So the camera, I was pleased with the camera. And the, the button on the side is great for taking pictures. So, you know, quick, fast pictures. So that worked out quite well. Uh, but one of my gripes about Windows Phone uh, on HTC has been uh, eased a little bit with uh, Nokia Drive. Yes, yes. Well, Jason, you yeah. tell us about Nokia Drive because you used to. <laughs> well, I, first, I was going to ask whether or not using the Nexus Four was like drinking a frozen margarita. <laughs> 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 Reference the last week's show. So if you haven't listened, you have to listen to Red Bot because he was hilarious. Actually, was it? Was, was it the week before? The week before, week before. Ed, 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 Ed on the Android was fantastic. He was. He was brilliant. <laughs> that was one of the highlights of my drive to work this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes. Anyway. Um, so yeah, one of the things that was kind of announced along with um, Windows Phone 8, I think it was at the time, was that Nokia was going to be the mapping technology on all the phones. And and although it's still branded as being on non-Nokia phones, it's it's still Nokia Maps underlying it. And they also announced that Nokia Drive was going to be coming to all Windows phones, not just Nokia um, branded. Um, and I know you were kind of frustrated because it all seemed to go rather quiet. Um, yeah. Nothing really came. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, they announced that Nokia Drive was now available for, for for all Windows Phone 8 devices, which I know, you know, hopefully alleviates a big headache of yours. Although I think, um, you know, Nokia Drive is a is a great um, turn-by-turn app. Um, I use it quite a bit, but it still doesn't have the same level of, of information like Tom Tom does. You know, you, you see it in a queue of traffic in a traffic jam thinking, you know, what it's a shame this thing couldn't steer me around it. Yeah, and it says things like... You know, I- you know, two minutes to destination. And you think, no, it's not. We're stuck in the traffic jam, <laughs> and it's yeah. going to take half an hour. And the it, it, whereas on my uh, Android phone, it's it's updated for the traffic, but yeah. you know, it's there. At least it's there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, having said that, I mean, hopefully it's going to come because um, Nokia Drive on on the Lumia 800, you can set up a live tile and set your work work and home just. Um, places and it will actually update the live tile and tell you when it detects you know bad traffic or you know if you leave now you 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 know you need to leave now to get there on time so hopefully those sort of things will eventually start to appear in the, the windows 8 version but, sorry windows phone 8 version yeah um you can edit that bit out <laughs> <laughs> nope <laughs> but no i mean i mean i think it's really good because you know as you say you know iphone has its free turn by turn android's got its own free turn by turn solution and i think you know, it's, it's good to see that parity come to Windows Phone. Yeah, absolutely. And something else, but this is for Nokia only, uh, the Music Plus subscription. Yes. So one of the things they announced when they came to Windows Phone was that was the Nokia Music app, um, which is basically free streaming of that. You can't pick your albums, but they're kind of mixes. Um, so they're kind of like almost smart DJs. Um, which you can download to your phone, but one thing you can you can you couldn't do is there was a limited number of downloads, and um, you can only skip a certain number of tracks before it stops you. But I mean, for a free service with you know really good um, stars of music on there, you know it was good. But yeah, now they've announced a new service, Nokia Music Plus, um, which is I think three pounds ninety nine a month, which is pretty pretty good with unlimited skips and unlimited downloads, and um, I think perhaps a slightly more um, wider choice of music. Mm. Yeah, it looks quite a decent surface at uh, service. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does, I, I think one of the most impressive things of that was the fact that there's actually a web app with it as well now. On on the, if you go to Plus, yes. so you could actually, I mean, you could use it in something like J River, for example, to get some, some pretty fabulous sound quality out of it as well. Yeah, and obviously also a, a native Windows 8 ready for their uh, tablet. <laughs> 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 yeah, do you think we'll see one at Mobile World Congress? It's only a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, yeah. I really want to, I think, but um, it's gonna be chunky. Yeah, and I just, I just worry. You know, we talked about the confusion with Surface and people returning it, and you know, will it be an ARM-based? Which I would, that would be my prediction anyway. That it would be an ARM-based one. So, you know, but I, I, you know, I would really love to see them come out with a, a nice, high-quality um, Lumia-style um, tablet. I think, think that'd be really impressive. And I think, you know, it's good to see Nokia. Finding these, you know, new revenue streams with this, you know, we just talked about the Nokia Music Plus app, and you know, with them potentially returning slightly to profit, you know, it's it's really good. Mm. Now, the other um, update which I had actually for today that I wanted to 
mention for Windows Phone was the new Kindle app and um, the, well, the, previous... the non-installing Kindle app. Yeah. <laughs> now, the previous Kindle app was a Windows Phone 7 app, but it worked okay. Um, the new app um, is a Windows Phone 8 app. It looks you know, looks really nice. I installed it because uh, it said there's an update. I thought, oh, great. So I installed it, and then when I opened the app, it didn't work. Nothing happens. It crashes. Um, so I tried again and crashed again. So I thought, I'll reset the phone, reset the phone. It still crashes. So... I saw lots of people on Twitter actually having the same problem. So what I found is you've got to uninstall. It doesn't matter if you've upgraded. You've still got to uninstall the app, reinstall it, go through the sign-in and registration process again, and then it's fine. Um, it does see it as another device, though. Um, so if if you're managing the number of Kindle devices, you've, you I think I ended up I think you can have ten devices or something like that. And because I keep flicking between different devices, and it, it created an extra device that it wouldn't download anything, so I had to delete the old Windows Phone uh, device off of my managed list. But it, it works fine. I don't know. Now one thing I didn't see: you, can, could you pin books in the previous version? I can't remember whether you could or couldn't. Uh, I think you could. Yeah. But now you've got a new icon there, a new Kindle icon, and um, and you can pin books as well. So um, that's just how it, I was tr trying to, th unfortunately, I installed it and then thought, I wonder, if that, <laughs> I wonder if I could do that. But it does seem a bit faster. They say that page turning is faster as well, and uh, it's, the live tile has been improved. So um, it, sh it kind of gives you a, a live tile of the last book you were reading and that kind of stuff as well. So it's, oh, it's a nice update anyway. It's just a shame that they... They, must, they didn't test this somehow because it seemed to have affected everybody, not just me. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, get that uh, installed. Uh, okay, so what else I want to mention? Um, oh, yeah, I want to mention the, my uh, new, new TV as well brief, briefly before. I, I've not had a chance to do the review yet, but um, I mentioned on the show I was looking at a new TV, so I did get one. It was a Samsung Series 8 LED, 55-inch. Uh, uh, smart TV. Now they did announce the Series Nine was at CES, which was between ordering and get receiving the TV. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I did expect that, and, uh, and I'm not particularly bothered about it because um, when the new, the, it takes a while for the new model to come out, and it's pretty expensive. But they also have the Evolution kits now as well, although we don't know the price. Uh, I saw it at CES. It's a little plug-in module that goes in the back and upgrades it to the current oh, sort of firmware, and uh, so. Effectively, you get the same TV, but uh, really nice. I've put some pictures on Twitter, so um, but as I say, I'll do a review. There's no bezel on it or anything like that. I wall mounted it, and, um, but it's interesting to see because it, it's got the smart TV and it's got the apps on there. Um, I just switched over my. Uh, I had a Love Film subscription, sort of the disc one, and I switched it to the streaming one. Uh, and I've been trying Netflix as well, so I've got that. So there's Love Film and Netflix apps on there. And um, they stream really well, and actually the quality. And I, I, I remember Gary, you saying something about this with Love Film, but the quality of the picture on the TV is better than watching Love Film through a PC connected to the same TV. And I don't know. I, I don't know why that is. I really don't. I don't know if they've done something special with the Samsung streaming or what, but it definitely is the case. Yeah. Um, so you get a really nice picture, and um, uh, it's a it, it's great watching something like the Formula One. I've been you know watching the rig. Sort of the highlight recaps of that, and seeing the the smoother frame rate makes a big difference, and uh, everything just looks really great. It's a really good picture on it, so really pleased with that. And uh, uh, I I've got a feeling that, that sort of the the rise of the smart TV, you'll see almost the demise of the home theater PC from for a lot of people because part of the reason why I loved having a PC connected to my TV is if I wanted to watch iPlayer, I wanted to watch Netflix, Love Film. Or uh, play Angry Birds, you know, it's all it's all there in the, on the PC, and there's no there's no problem. But with a smart TV, you've got, got you've got that kind of stuff in there. You've even got Skype on there and a camera. There's not the same need to have a PC connected um, than there used to be, and it's got you know DNA and everything else. So yeah. uh, I think for the for the average user, I think that you know the, the the era of the home theater PC is definitely going away. It's something we've, yeah. we've sort of said already. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I think definitely. I mean, you know, there's, you know, new technology like smart TVs coming along. And I think, you know, I think really they're going to be a bigger boost to TV sales than 3D. So I think, um, you know, well, I mean, we just we just use our stuff through the Xbox. But, you know, I could see a time if, if we weren't, 
using the Xbox for gaming as well, as you say, just having a smart TV with, you know, iPlayer and ITV and foreign demand and everything just on there. You know, why do you need anything else to touch the TV? And, you know, we want one less device on in the house and, and one remote control. And hopefully, you know, if they yeah. can kind of start to make the UIs consistent, you know, one experience. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, and especially once you've got, um, and with and the deal of day and the, uh, you know things like that. I mean, it's great that you know I was trying it over the over the weekend. You, you got, I can take a picture from my phone, and within sort of two seconds you can throw it up on the TV. And I know it's to, to people that have had you know smart TVs with DNA for a while. It's nothing new, but it's the first time I've had that, and it, it really it really is a nice feature. And it's just something I would have used the PC for in the past, and you know you don't need to do that now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I I did something kind of similar at Christmas, you know, um, I had some family around and I hadn't had a chance to take the pictures I'd taken at Christmas off the phone and put them onto the um, onto the home server. But because I've got my phone to upload them to SkyDrive, we just booted up the SkyDrive app on the Xbox and let them peruse the the, the pictures from Christmas on there. Mm, yeah, absolutely. I think it's um, it it's a nice it's a nice. You know, smart TVs are definitely. I think I'd rather as you know, the 3Ds are nice to have, and in fact, I'm not really even tried it. But the smart TV is something that we we started using from day one, and uh, you know, we're still using. And, and I think for the family, they find it easier because if you want to watch Love Film, they can just do it through the TV remote, and they don't have to, you know, get the PC fired up and get the apps loaded and whatever. So, I think it works quite well. And logs is fast enough; it really does work very, very well. Yeah. Uh, okay, a couple of things. Well, I've got an email. Just want to forget that, but I just want to ask you guys thoughts on this. So, Cisco selling the Linksys brand to Belkin. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That was that was quite a surprise. And I, I met yeah. up at I met Linksys actually at CES. In fact, I bumped into to uh, Mike Dunn from Linksys, who um, we had on the show a few years ago. But go on, Gary. I was going to say, say it's interesting because um, I saw saw a lot of, of tweets about. Um, there were other brands that Cisco might have been better selling off earlier before they jumped dumped them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think I mean, I've never really seen the fit. I mean, Linksys make equipment which competes with Cisco's branded equipment at a much lower price. Um, <laughs> and having them in the same family always struck me as a very odd thing to do, be marketed by the same people. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it diluted Cisco's main brand. I, I felt in lots of ways. Mm. And and Linksys products, I mean, I've found them always been pretty good, to be honest. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, there was a lot of a lot of people used to say, say, why bother buying a Cisco product when you can buy a Linksys product, which comes from the same place. People. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how it fits with Belkin because Belkin, I always think of the cheaper end of the market in accessories rather than anything, you know, the higher end. Well, not even higher end, but. Uh, meet more expensive items like routers. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it all, mm. all works together. I guess. At least they didn't kill it like they did with Flip. Yeah, yes, yeah, same yes. Flip. Flip, Flip is the brand I was thinking of in terms mm. of uh, they should have sold that off and just kill it. Yeah, <laughs> it's a just, great product. I still used it at CES. Great for uh, the yeah. videos. Yeah, um, and I actually put a picture of my old uh, Linksys uh, extender as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Actually, a lot, lot of, a lot of router, lot of extended paperweights about now with Windows 8. <laughs> yeah, in fact, that's one thing I don't think we've even talked since that happened. Um, it was between Christmas and New Year. Uh, they Microsoft put out a uh, knowledge base article about extenders not being supported on on Windows 8 apart from the Xbox, and it kind of stuck under the radar. And it was only when I was at CES I thought, well, actually, I don't think I've written about this, and so I posted that. So, not really surprising, but uh, a bit of a shame. Yeah, and was um, there um. Was there any info from Seaton whether or not they're going to be able to get the um, Echo updated? Well, I mean, I, I, I yes, I met up with the guys from Seaton and we had some pretty good uh, discussion actually. And I'm not sure how much they want to 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 say because um, I'm sure that yes, well, of course, yeah, they're they're keen on. I'm sure they well, I was to speak to them, speak for them, but I'm sure they want to get it working. Um, it'd be great if they could get their extender working. I'm, sh I'm also sure that Microsoft wouldn't be particularly helpful either because there's no one there to help them. So yeah. I'm, I, th I think the em the emphasis. I put it in the post and then I got a lot of messages saying, "Oh, you're wrong," because I said in the post, "You know, Microsoft aren't supporting extenders uh, other than the Xbox 360." But what, what I put when I updated it is, it doesn't mean that people can't fix their extenders. So someone like Seaton can. It doesn't 
prevent they're not prevented from getting it working. It's mm-hmm. just it's not supported by Microsoft. You're not going to get Linksys updating their old extenders or, <laughs> or the no. Netgear or HP or whatever. But a company that are currently actively working on extenders it's probably in their interest to do so. So whether it's technically possible, I don't know. And I'm sure the guys at Seaton would could answer it probably better answer that one. Um, but it, I think it's um, it just shows the current state. You know, Microsoft have got it working for the Xbox, and that's it. And there's no one there to say, "No, can we have this fixed, please?" Because I don't think there's anybody working on the. Pro- well, I know there is yeah. nobody working on it anyway. Presumably, it's some kind of combination of the switch to .NET four for Media Center as the. Um, .NET version and maybe some kind of certificate. I think it's something to do with the RDP protocol as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sure if they got it working on the Xbox, then I can't see why uh, Seton couldn't get theirs working with if they were helped by Microsoft. It's just depending on how, how much help they've gotten, um, whether they can work out you know the how how it was achieved, whether they've, whether they've got to do it through reverse engineering or they get some help with it. And I think it'd be a lot harder for them to do it reverse engineering. But they are very clever chaps, and I'm sure that uh, they've got the the will to do it anyway. Yeah. Actually, I heard something that I that I never knew. I was <clears throat> um, listening to uh, tip my hat to the uh, Digimedia Zone guys. They had Ben Drawbar on from Engadget HD. And he was saying that the Xbox doesn't use RDP, that the Xbox has some other way because I always describe the Xbox as using, you know, like RDP, but apparently the Xbox has has a, a unique way, and that's why it's able to have all the um, animations. So it doesn't work the same way as the third yeah. party. Yeah, I, think I, I remember that from at the time. I think there's some code you know, of sharing that uh, that works between them rather mm. than just RDP, because I know the video gets a separate RDP stream or something like that, but it's, it is slightly different on the Xbox. Um, yeah, it's RDP, RDP plus streams. Yeah, yeah. Which is actually, it's actually how the other extenders work, but I think there's there's some black magic going on with the Xbox. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and and Windows 8 has broken the black magic for everybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, hope, ho- hopefully they can get that that sorted. Right. Let me just re- bring this email up as well. Um, this is about video and, and Windows Phone 8, actually. Uh, so it's from Richard, and he says, I've been trying to get some video files I have to show up as TV on my Windows Phone 8 in an episode and season order with very little luck. It looks like it's a similar problem to the Windows 8 video app. Getting my TV episodes to appear is impossible, and it appears that's by design. And there's a link which he gave me, which I'll include in the show notes, to a Microsoft Answers site. It only allows DRM-protected content to work as TV, and it seems very restricted to even more so than Apple. Does the panel reckon that this is the direction Microsoft is heading and is it a really good thing? In the meantime, I'm off to, see, to find out when my movies are going to launch their excellent media center add-in as a Windows 8 app. Cheers, Richard. So thanks for the email first, Richard. And it was a couple of weeks ago, but I did say I'd keep it for this. So um, have you had experience with that? I, I certainly haven't tried it. I saw the post and gave it a try and I couldn't get it to work. I think, um, I think it's something maybe more linked to the to the synchronization because um you have the similar problem with with podcasts if you manually copy podcasts onto the phone um using the usb connectivity it just shows up as mp3s in the music it doesn't register it as a as being a podcast and i think it's maybe the, the same thing now i keep hoping with the the windows 8 um windows phone add-on it's still in beta and I keep hoping that there's going to be an update and that maybe they're still adding some missing functionality and that, you know, podcast support and TV synchronization might, might return. But I think, I think that's the issue that it it isn't actually telling the device um, what the file is. Um, And I don't think it necessarily reads the metadata from the file. Um, So I think, you know, that it's, for now, it's missing functionality. Whether or not it will come back, uh, you know, I just don't know. It's it's always so difficult, isn't it, with Media Center having such limited support now? Yeah, I mean, I think when you read the uh, the answers post, it just I think someone from Microsoft said, yeah, this is by design. It only works with sort of protected content that you've purchased uh, or rented. So uh, not very helpful, but that's that seems the way the, the way it is. Because I remember I used to do that with my Zoom. I used to put TV content on my Zoom. Um, and it showed up in the TV thing. You know, it was ideal. I used to mm. get it from Media Center and right click and send to Zoom, and it, it worked. So in fact, we've gone, you know, quite a bit backwards <laughs> from <laughs> from that. In fact, it was quite the, the Sync app is nowhere near as good as the Zoom app. And it, it, the Zoom app was a, a was a 
1.0 product from the original Zune app, <laughs> which and then this one has even got less features than that had. You know, so uh, hopefully all these things, it all ties together really, doesn't it? The mail app, the syncing app, the people app, they, they've all got work to be done on them and they do need to keep improving them. Yes, yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, it is a shame really that we lost the Zoom client because I think, you know, we did, we've lost some functionality there and whether or not, you know, it ever comes back is, you know, remains to be seen. I mean, it's ironic really that, you know, Windows Phone 8 supports synchronising music using Windows Media Player. I mean, that just seems archaic now. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> and, uh, and and I think the Zoom definitely was a product, a problem that Sinofsky had with the not invented here type thing. It was an, another team, not the Windows team, and, and out it went. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it could have done, you know, it was kind of semi-metro and it could have, could have done with some, you know, increasing the size of some of the hit points. But I really like the Zoom app and I actually made the, you know, took the pain of transitioning from, me, from media player into Zoom thinking, well, this is the future, you know, I need to bite the bullet now. And, <laughs> and here we are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jason, next time you think something is the future, we let us know and we'll, we'll still clear of it. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. anything. anything. <laughs> Jason recommends it. Yeah, stay well <laughs> clear of it. <laughs> so it's, you know, convert, converting my you know WPL files into ZPL files, and anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. We'll, we'll stay clear of at, that. At the end of the day, I, I at the end of the day, I am the mug that's got all my music ripped in WMA format. Well, WMA's still here, so that's <laughs> all right. Don't don't, 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 dis don't discredit WMA when Gary's around. <laughs> <laughs> You're my list now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, a couple of other things I just want to mention before we finish as well. Uh, a couple of, well, I posted a lot of videos, um, uh, and some of them were, were, I wanted to see if you noticed. Did you see the one with the eye tracking that I did uh, from CES? Very impressive stuff. I know we yeah, saw I've something really like that a couple of CES yeah. back, but uh, not as good as that. Yeah, this this worked really well, um, especially with Windows A, and because it's got the sort of big hit points, it works really well. So. Um, Link to the show notes for anyone who's not seen it, but basically there's a little camera on top of the, a special camera on top of the, the 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 monitor. You do a bit of calibration, um, and then you just basically. So if you're in me, in the metros, you look at the mail tile, you press the control key, which is like the click key effectively, and it opens the mail tile. Or you look at the people one, and you press the click key, and, and it opens the people one. And if you click on a, an email, or you look at an email, then press the click key, it it opens it. And if you're in a browser and you want to uh, you know, it's got a, a scroll on it. As you, as you gaze down, holding down the key, it scrolls for you. Really impressive. And what was impressive is you don't have to stand in the same place because once it's calibrated your eyes the, and the shape of your eyes in three dimensions, you can then move around and it still follows you. Uh, yes. So you didn't have to have your head sort of locked in one position. Pre pretty impressive stuff, actually, and very quick to use. So uh, a link for that in the show notes. Uh, plus all the other link videos that have I've posted some Comcast stuff and uh, MetaWatch and, and all sorts of stuff on there. Um, I also did a video review as well of the Ferrari GT1 speaker. Very nice speaker, Doc, actually. So um, I'll include a link for that in the show notes. I think uh, Ruth's been busy posting some reviews as well. Yeah, she's at the um, Spinnaker, um, Edifier Spinnakers, which I must be. I had listened to too, and was very impressed with the sound quality of them. Um, incredibly good for sound quality. Cause it's, I mean, they, okay, they're a little bit pricey, so about two hundred and fifty pound street price at the moment, but they look really cool. I mean, they just sort of like sail, sort of you can get them in different colours and they look like sails. But the quality of the sound was it's the clarity of the sound which got me. It, basically, whatever you put in as a source, you knew what you were playing. So if, if you if you had a poor quality source, you would hear that. But if you had a very good high quality source, you could really tell the difference. And and people and people who listened to them with us who, who weren't. I mean, I, I I don't class myself as an audiophile, but I certainly class myself as someone who, li who likes to, to really listen to music and hear it. Mm. And but, but I had other people come in, in um, who who weren't that, that uh, into quality music, but they could equally hear when we're playing things through, say, an iPod, or as opposed to playing it from a, a, a decent source. Um, and that's not not usual. Sort of compressed compressed sound really you could really tell it was compressed, which is maybe not a good thing, but 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 you could you could really hear the quality of the sound. And you put um, you put some some of the, the sort of the better quality music players through through in terms of output, really came across brilliantly. And the Bluetooth has worked very well as well. I found I found the Bluetooth worked exceptionally well. Um, actually tried it out with Surface as well, and that worked exceptionally well. 
um, maybe Bluetooth because it's certainly Bluetooth across from that if it sounds across from that. So, yeah, very good stuff. Yeah, no, good stuff. Um, and there was a couple of things I'll mention as well briefly. My movies updates as well, 4.05 PL3, new version of my movies for home server as well, for, which was which is now called My Movies for Home and Essential Service Solution, 2.13 PL. <laughs> uh, and just in the, men- in the chat room, someone said, have anybody hit play with Wide Eye? Um, and I think the only time I've actually seen it was at CES, and I saw it again this year. So I've still not seen any devices that support it. I think it, it, well, it obviously it's an Intel pro- in pr- protocol, so only Intel devices support it, but I've not really... Yeah, I, I, one of the projectors I reviewed had it on the... Um... The Philips projector I had, I can't remember, but it's really good quality anyway. Um, mm. It's a nice system. So it's a bit like a sort of AirPlay. Yeah. Like AirPlay yeah. sort of mirrors your screen. It looks, it works quite well, but I've only ever sort of seen it in a demo situation, not in real life. Mm. Of course, Philips exited community consumer electronics today. Yes, I saw that uh, that news. So, um, yeah, for the big <laughs> CDs and. Beta Max and everything else, yeah, you know, and, and, and some fabulous projectors and all sorts of things that, uh, yeah, so uh, all gone. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's interesting that the consumer market and uh, how it's how it's changing. And you've got the likes of Samsung, who who were definitely the the iconic or sort of the hero brand of CES. I've got to say, you know, they were the they were the press conference that everybody wanted to go to. Maybe Nvidia and Sony, but you know, and they were the booth that was the, probably the biggest and certainly the busiest. Uh, yeah. And a massive range of stuff, you know, from Android fridges, uh, <laughs> all sorts of stuff. <laughs> that would give you brain freeze. <laughs> it would. <laughs> Excellent. What, oh, go, what go was ahead. the um, what was the 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 uh, Panasonic tablet with the 4K screen? What was that like to look at? Oh, very nice, really nice. In fact, it, it was funny. Kind of um, all the Metro icons, you know, sort of twenty thirty Metro tiles that you see on the normal start screen which sort of fill your start screen they were sort of shoved in the top left corner (laughs) (laughs) um but it scales very well actually the much better than the windows desktop the windows desktop looks really weird at that high resolution very small targets um but then the the windows apps itself you know the 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 native sort of metro style apps they all work really well so that was very nice that actually um I see that. So, um, Sony had a nice t- all-in-one as well, which I liked. The oh, I forgot the name of it now. A, a, a video of that as well. Um, w- Windows 8 really works. You know, Windows 8 was everywhere actually on all PCs, d- despite Microsoft not being there. Um, so as a, it, you know, it worked quite well. You could see Windows 8 being, you know, the sensor. A lot of people having a look at Windows 8, and a lot of people, you know, normal sort of punters at the show were very curious about Windows 8 as well. It touches yeah, everything on it. Touch on everything. I can't remember. I think it was the. I think I saw a Sony device, which was like a 21-inch um, all-in-one, but the actual display detached and had a battery inside it, so you could actually kind of. Yeah, I did use a video of that. 20-inch. Oh right, I got yeah, yeah. I, I read about that when they announced it, but I hadn't realised it would actually come out. So, yeah. Yeah, it was the idea is it's got a. I think it's. I think he said it was sort of two hours battery life, something like this. It wasn't really designed to be used as a laptop with battery. It was more designed as you can have it in the living room and you want to take it to your kitchen and then you take it so you know you can just carry it around and, and not worry about you know shutting it all down or anything like that so it's kind of portable but sort of for around the home right you won't be taking it on the bus mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I had something that i wasn't expecting today i got i got portico on my windows lumia 920 all right go on explain what that is um so um it actually came out of the u.s Late last year, but Portico is the first update to Windows Phone 8. Um, as a kind of the usual number of bug fixes, but also adds um, things like SMS um, call reject. So when you reject a call, you can choose to send oh, an right, SMS and yeah, yeah. um, things like that. So um, for once, I'm not actually complaining at T-Mobile for delaying my update. I actually got it. You know, it seems to be rolling out to everyone. This is the Sorry, this is... rolling out in big numbers. I got this. When did I get that? I got that last year, did I? Perhaps I, 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 it was quite a while ago. Yes, yeah. Everyone else kind of got it some time ago, and and I say, Nokia Lumia owners in the US got it um, last year as well. And for some reason, I'm not quite sure exactly why, but Nokia did post to say, look, this is going to be February time in Europe, and 
here we are just before February. But for once, I, I haven't felt like the carries have got in the way. I yeah. don't know what the what the delay was. You know, obviously it is, I believe, a different skew for for the Europe market. So at least you got it though when they said, you know, that's um, you not feel like you've got is indefinite hold and that kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah no, it's good because I mean, I mean, I've had a great battery life out of it, but every now and again it will just go into a battery nose dive where it will go from full charge to almost fully depleted within 11 12 hours um and then restart the phone and and that goes away again and I'm back to kind of you know almost 48 hours between charges so um I'm hoping that might get resolved yeah yeah i i think you know I've, as i said i've done the post on it I, I like windows phone 8 um i just like android more at the moment but uh especially the Google Now stuff that worked really well when I was away, but we'll see. We'll keep coming towards them. I certainly don't miss my iPhone. That's one thing. Uh, no, no, I have no regrets of not of getting rid of that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, I think that's but time we've got. Um, we've got all the time we've got for today. I'm so glad to get back to our normal schedule. We should be back for this for the next few weeks, at least uh, no plans to, to go off anywhere. Uh, <laughs> It was great to talk to you again and great to see everybody in the chat room, Rich and uh, mystery guest 111. <laughs> 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 John and everybody else. So, uh, so, yeah. so thanks to everybody for, for listening. It was great to be back and we shall see you next week. Uh, we'll probably record live 8 o'clock next Tuesday evening. Yeah, Excellent. thanks to you for the coverage of CES because it was, there was some really good interviews there and I really enjoyed listening. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, then definitely, definitely listen to the Edbot one. Oh, yeah. It's yes. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Stop recording. Thanks, everybody, in the chat room.